Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast. Today is Friday, August 26, 2022. Big Friday show today. Major League Baseball, NFL preseason, Little League World Series, WNBA playoffs, Major League Soccer, college football week zero, golf, NASCAR, NFL defensive end rankings, news and notes, and best bet and Fab Five, the return of the Fab Five. I was debating on whether to do it for week zero or not, and I chose to do so because I love a lot of the games on the board. All right, we'll start with Major League Baseball. We'll go over yesterday's results and look ahead to today. All righty. Um, the, let's see here. Rays over to Angels, 8-3. to three. Cardinals over to Cubs, 8-3. to three. Mariners over the Guardians, 3-1. to one. Orioles over to White Sox, 4-3-11. to three and 11. On a walk-off single by Anthony Santander. Phillies over the Reds, 4-0. Mets over the Rockies, 3-1. Blue Jays over the Red Sox, 6-5-10. So best bet, yet another loser. Astros over the Twins, 6-3. Yankees over the Athletics, 13-4. Okay, tonight's game, 6-30. You have the Dodgers at the Marlins. So, um, Don Mattingly against his former team. Tyler Anderson's going for L.A. And we don't know who's going for Miami yet. Um, So, no pick. For the show. Maybe a, a run line if um the right number arises. Um Reds Nationals. Mike Miner and Kate Savali making his uh debut for the Nationals. Nats are minus one forty six, Reds are plus one twenty four over under eight and a half, minus of ten each way. Reds plus one half is minus one sixty six, Nats plus one half is minus one thirty eight. Um I like the over because of the unknown of uh Savali and Mike Miner's just terrible. Pirates, Phillies, Bryce Wilson, and Bailey Falter. Phillies minus 295, Pirates plus 240, over under 9, minus 10 each way. Pirates plus 1 half is plus 118, Phillies minus 1 half is minus 142. I'm going with the over. Angels, Blue Jays, Reed Detmers, and Mitch White. Um, Toronto minus 188, Angels plus 158, over under 9, over is even money, and there's minus 122. Angels plus one half is minus one twenty five. Eight, uh, Blue Jays minus one half is plus one hundred four. Um, not going Blue Jays run line again. That cost me uh, some money. Um, so I am actually going to go first half Blue Jays run line minus a half and minus one fourteen. Rockies Mets Chad Cole and Chris Bassett. Mets minus three fifty. Rockies plus two eighty over under eight and a half. Overs minus one hundred four. Unders minus one eighteen. Rockies plus one half is plus one thirty two. Mets minus one half is minus one sixty. Um, over. Chad Cole stinks. Um, Rays Red Sox on Apple TV plus. JT Chargois and Michael Waka. Red Sox minus one twenty four. Rays plus one hundred six. Over under nine. Overs minus one eighteen. Unders minus one hundred four. Rays plus one half is minus one eighty four. Red Sox minus one half is plus one fifty two. Um, I think that this is priced correctly. I hate to say it. I like the under. Um, Tigers, Rangers at 8. Tyler Alexander and Glenn Otto. Texas minus 164. Tigers plus 138. Over under 8. Over is minus 112. Under is minus 108. Tigers plus 1 half is minus 144. Rangers minus 1 half is plus 120. I like the over. Um, D-backs, White Sox. Tommy Henry and Johnny Cueto. Um... White Sox minus 178, D-backs plus 150, over-unders 8.5, overs minus 115, unders minus 105. D-backs plus 1.5 is minus 140, White Sox minus 1.5 is plus 116. Um, tough one, but I'm going to go with the under. Johnny Cueto has actually been really good for the White Sox this year. Cubs, Brewers, Justin Steele, and Freddie Peralta. Brewers minus 152, Cubs plus 128, over-unders 7.5. Overs minus 106, unders minus 114. Cubs plus one half is minus 64. Brewers minus one half is plus 136. Um, I'm going to go with a banking on a, a bullpen blow up. I'm going over. Padres, Royals, Joe Musgrove, and Chris Bubik. Padres minus 188. Royals plus 158 over under eight and a half. Minus 10 each way. Padres minus one half is minus 118. Royals plus one half is minus 102. Um. I'm going with the over. Chris Bubik's terrible. Giants, Twins, Alex Wood, and Joe Ryan. 
Twins minus 130. Giants plus 110. Over under 7.5. Minus 110 each way. Giants plus 1.5 is minus 205. Twins minus 1.5 is plus 168. Um, That's a hard one. And I like the over. Braves, Cardinals at 8.15. Spencer Strider and Jose Quintana. Great matchup between two really good teams. Braves minus 152, Cardinals plus 128, over under 7, overs minus 118, unders minus 104. Braves minus 1F is plus 116, Cardinals plus 1F is minus 140. I'm going with the Cardinals as a home underdog. They're plus 128, 50.7% to win according to ESPN Analytics. Wrong team's favored. Um, 930, Yankees Athletics. Garrett Cole against J.P. Sears. That is a very interesting matchup. Yanks minus 245, Oakland 2 to 1, over under 7, overs minus 102, unders minus 120, Yankees minus 1F is minus 137, A's plus 1F is plus 114. I'm going Oakland run line plus 1F is plus 114. I know that was a botched pick yesterday. I'm going with it again today. Um, JP Sears has just been excellent for uh, Oakland since coming over in that trade. And 10 o'clock on Apple TV Plus, you have the Guardians at the Mariners, Shane Bieber and Logan Gilbert. Guardians minus 116, Mariners minus 102, over under 7, over is even money, and there's minus 122. Guardians minus 1F is plus 176, Mariners plus 1F is minus 1, or minus 210. Um, this is a hard one, and I think that um, the line should be a little bit closer. So I'm going to go... Hmm. This is a difficult call. Um even money should be forty seven five. Um I'm gonna go with Seattle at home at minus one oh two. All right, Saturday, three o'clock, Angels Blue Jays, Shoei Otani and Alec Manoa. 4 o'clock, Rays Red Sox, Jeffrey Springs Rich Hill, 6 o'clock, Pirates Phillies, Tyler Bede, Kyle Gibson, Dodgers Marlins, Dustin May, Sandy Alcantara, 7 o'clock, Reds Nats, Luis Sessa and Paolo Espino, Tigers Rangers, Eduardo Rodriguez coming back from injury against Kohei Arihara, D-backs White Sox, Merrill Kelly Davies Martin, Orioles Astros, Dean Kremer and Jose Yurdeke, Cubs Brewers, Drew Smiley, Brandon Woodruff, Rockies Mets, Kyle Freeland, David Peterson, um, Padres Royals, Yu Darvish, and we don't know who's going for KC. Um, on Fox, you have Braves Cardinals, Charlie Morton and Jordan Montgomery, Giants Twins, Alex Cobb and Sonny Gray, 9 o'clock Yankees Athletics, we know going for New York, and Adam Oller is going for Oakland. And 10 o'clock, Fox Sports 1, Guardians, Mariners, Zach, please, second, lose Castillo. I need to see something for a second. Did I skip a game? Um, I skipped for tonight. I apologize, guys. Astros hosting the Orioles, Kyle Bradish and Lance McCullers Jr. Astros, 2-1 to one favorites. Orioles, plus 168, over under 8. Overs, minus 105. Unders, minus 115. Orioles, plus 1F is minus 122. Astros, minus 1F is plus 102. Um... I do like the Astros online. Minus one half at plus one or two. I think that's good value. I think 70% should be even money on run line. So I, I like the Astros minus one and a half tonight against the Orioles. All right, to so Sunday's games. 12 o'clock on Peacock, Dodgers, Marlins, Julio Urias, and Edward Cabrera. So the Dodgers are playing at 9 o'clock their time in the morning, which is crazy. Um, one thirty Reds, Nats, Nick Lodolo, Patrick Corbin, Phillies hosting the Pirates for us. Nick Contreras, Noah Syndergaard. Rays, Red Sox. Corey Kluber, Nick Faveda. Angels, Blue Jays. Tucker Davidson, Ross Stripling. Rockies, Mets. Herman Marquez, Max Scherzer. 2 o'clock, D-backs, White Sox. Zach Davies and Dylan Cease. Orioles, Astros. Austin Volt and Justin Verlander. Cubs, Brewers. Adrian Sampson and Eric Lauer. Padres, Royals. Sean Manaya, Daniel Lynch. Giants, Twins, Jacob Junis and Aaron Sanchez, 2.30, Tigers, Rangers, Drew Hutchison, Cole Reagans, 4 o'clock, Yankees, A's, Domingo Herman, Zach Logie, Guardians, Mariners, Aaron Savali, Robbie Ray, 
And on Sunday Night Baseball, and deservingly so, Braves Cardinals, Jake Odorizzi, and Adam Wainwright. All right, now we'll move on to the NFL preseason. We'll go over the results from yesterday and look ahead to the weekend and tonight. Um, Chiefs over the Packers, 17-10. to 10. Um, Chiefs 2-1 in the preseason, Green Bay 1-2. and two. Um, We did not see Pat Mahomes. We saw um, Shane Bichelle. 11 of 17, 166 yards and two touchdowns. Chad Henney, 4 of 7, 23 yards. And uh, Dustin Crum, 1 of 11, 11 yards. And in one rush for minus one. And Jordan Love started for Green Bay, 16 of 26, 148 yards and an interception. One rush for five yards. And then Danny Etling, 10 to 13, 97 yards. One rush for seven. Texans over to 49ers, 17 to nothing. Houston finishes the preseason 3-0. San Francisco 2 and 1. Um Davis Mills 6 of 10, 58 yards of touchdown on the pick. Um Kyle Allen 2 of 3, 36 yards and Jeff Driscoll 0 for 1 and then 1 for 3 on the ground. Um Trey Lance 7 11, 49 yards and 1 for 1 on the ground. Nate Sudfield 5 of 10, 49 yards and Brock Purdy 13 of 20, 180 yards in a pick. All right, here we go. Preseason Friday night, 7 o'clock. You have the Bills against the Panthers. Um, The dress reversal game, or really the dress reversal games were pretty much last week. But you'll be seeing some uh, regular quarterbacks go this uh, week in the preseason. Um, Panthers are favored by 6.5, total is 39.5. Um, I think you'll see a lot of uh, Sam Darnold in this game. I don't think you'll see Josh Allen, so I'm going to lay to 6.5 for Carolina. 8 o'clock NFL Network, Seahawks, Cowboys. Seahawks are seven point favorites on the road, total three seven and a half. Um I'm taking the Cowboys get in the seven. Um I just think that that's too high for Seattle on the road, even in the preseason. Um Chargers, Saints. Saints are favored by three, total three six and a half. Um I'm gonna lay heavy juice on the Saints minus the three, because they have a deeper quarterback room. And in eight fifteen, the Patriots against the Raiders. Raiders are one point favorite, total thirty six and a half. I'll lay the one point. With Las Vegas. Um, Saturday is a big day in the NFL preseason. 3 o'clock, you have the Jaguars against the Falcons. Falcons giving 3.5, total 37.5. Um, give me the Falcons minus the points. I think you'll see a lot of Desmond Ritter here. Um, 6 o'clock, NFL Network, Rams, Bengals. Bengals favored by 2.5, total 37.5. So, Super Bowl rematch in the preseason. Um, the Bengal QBs have been okay in the preseason. And the Rams really aren't trying, so I'm laying the 2.5. 7 o'clock, Bears, Browns. Um, Browns favored by five and a half totals, 41 and a half, um, laying the five and a half with the Browns, Tennessee hosting the Cardinals, Tennessee's a three point favorite, totals 35 and a half, a late to three Tennessee, you see a lot of Malik Lewis in this game, Malik Willis, Eagles, Dolphins, Dolphins giving one and a half, totals 37 and a half, I'm going the other way, Kate taking the Eagles, getting the points, I think they have, um, a deeper quarterback room, he'll, it'll probably be Teddy Bridgewater against, um, uh, Gardner Minshew. I'll take the Eagles, getting the one and a half. Commanders, Ravens. Ravens favored by six and a half, totals 39 and a half. Um, that's a huge line. The Ravens preseason win streaks on the line. Um, Commanders, I think, actually, no, the Ravens have a deeper quarterback room, but that's a high line. So I'm going to take Commanders, six and a half. 7 30, the Buccaneers against the Colts. Colts favored by three, total 41 and a half. Um, Tom Brady's playing in this game. And I think you'll see um, the backups behind Brady as well. So I'm taking the Bucks get in the three. And 9 o'clock on NFL Network, you have the Vikings at the Broncos. Vikings giving one total 35 and a half. I actually like the over in a preseason game for once. Sunday, 1 o'clock, NFL Network. The Snoopy Bowl, Giants at the Jets. Jets giving three total 38 and a half. Um, give me the Giants getting the three. Um... I think you actually will see Daniel Jones a little bit. You'll see a lot of Tyrod Taylor. I don't like the Jets quarterback depth. Other, I mean, I like Mike White and Joe Flacco, but I think that Tyrod Taylor is arguably better than both of those guys. So I like the Giants getting the three for the sole reason is that I think they'll play their guys more. And 430 CBS, Lions, Steelers. Steelers are given four and a half totals, three, eight and a half. Um, I like the over here because... 
I think you'll see a lot of points in the preseason game. The Steelers have a deep quarterback room. So Steelers in the over. Steelers money line in the over would be a good, like, same game. Or even Steelers bet it down to, like, two and a half and take the over kind of a deal. All right, so there you have it for the rest of the preseason. Now we'll move on to the Little League World Series. Um, We'll go over the results from yesterday and look ahead to um today and the weekend, which should be... Very interesting. Um, so, um, Curacao over Mexico, 2-1 to elimination game. And Tennessee over Texas, 7-1 to elimination game. Um, so, we have four games left. We have the International Championship, the U.S. Championship, the Little League World Series Championship, and then the uh, the runners-up game. So Saturday, 12.30 on ABC of Curacao and Chinese Tepe playing for the right to go to Little League World Series Championship. Um, both these teams have been really good throughout the tournament. Um, I think that, um, both teams have been impressive. Um, but I just think Chinese Tepe is better. So I think Chinese Tepe is going to the championship. And then 330 ABC, the U.S. championship between Tennessee and Hawaii. Um, I love Hawaii. They've been... The darlings of this tournament. They've just been killing everybody. Give me Hawaii to go to the championship. All right. The uh, the third place game will be between Curacao and Tennessee. Uh, both these teams have been really good throughout the tournament. Give me Tennessee to come in third. And then the championship. Three o'clock on ABC. You have Chinese Tepe against Hawaii. I love this Hawaii team. I loved them from the start. I almost picked them to win the whole thing before the tournament, but I took New York instead. So I'm going with Honolulu, Hawaii to win the 2022 Little League World Series over Chinese Tepe in what should be a really, really fun weekend. All right, now I'll move on to the WNBA playoffs. Um, we have the semifinals beginning on Sunday, 4 o'clock on ESPN. Semifinals game one between the Storm. And the Aces, um, both these teams swept their opponents in the first round. Actually, wait. Yes, both these teams have swept their opponents in the first round. Um, in this game, I have the Aces as a nine-point favorite. And... It is five and a half totals, 170. If I'm laying the five and a half with the Aces, um, I love Seattle. I think they're probably going to win this series. But I just think the Aces will win game one. And 8 o'clock on ESPN2, you have the sun in the sky. Um, projection here, uh, sky, four and a half. And it's three and a half totals, 165 and a half. I like the over. I think that's an over game. All right, now we'll move on to Major League Soccer. We have a solid window to talk about. Um, tonight, 8 o'clock, you have Austin against LAFC. LAFC's big winning streak came to a close last time they played. Austin's won two of their last four games. Um, LAFC and Austin are the top two teams in the West, so this was luck of the draw for this game to be in the Friday night primetime slot. Um, Austin's plus 165, LAFC's plus 125, draw plus 280. Um, both these teams are very good. I just think LAFC's in a good bounce back spot on the road. It is a plus 125 favorite. And at 10 o'clock, you have Portland, Seattle. Portland winless in their last five. Seattle won one in their last five. 
Um, Portland's 10th, Seattle's 9th. They're each um, one back of L.A. for the final playoff spot. Um, Seattle is plus 160. Portland's plus 140 at home and draws plus 250. I'm going with the draw at plus 250. Um, all right, Saturday, 3.30, you have Minnesota hosting Houston. Minnesota, winners of their last two. Houston's winless in their last five. Minnesota minus 145, Houston plus 310, draw plus 290. I'm going to go under two and a half goals, plus 126. Seven o'clock, Charlotte hosting Toronto. Charlotte, two wins in their last five. Toronto, same thing. Um, Toronto plus 140. Or I'm sorry, Charlotte's plus 140. Toronto's plus 155, draw plus 250. For this game, I'm going to go with the draw. At plus 250. Red Bulls hosting Miami. Red Bulls won win their last five. Miami's won their last two and in three of their last five. Um, Red Bulls minus 160 draw plus 290. Miami plus 370. For this game, I'm going to go with the... Hmm. I kind of do like the draw at plus 290 in this one. Um, Cincinnati's hosting Columbus. Cincinnati, one win, their last five. And same thing for Columbus. Um, Cincy's plus 105. Columbus plus 210. Draw plus 250. I'm going with Cincy at home. 730, Philly hosts Colorado. Philly um, rotating wins and losses in their last five. Colorado's winless in their last three. Phillies minus 180 home favorite draw three to one Colorado four to one. I'm going over three and a half goals plus 164 because Philly randomly puts up a lot of goals sometimes in their games. Um, eight o'clock Chicago hosting uh, CF Montreal. Chicago's won two of their last five. Montreal's won their last two and in three of their last five. Um, Chicago plus 120, draw plus 230, Montreal plus 190. Um, this is a hard one. But I'm actually going to go with Montreal as a nice home or road dog at plus 190. Um, 8.30 of KC hosting San Jose. KC winners of two of their last three. San Jose won their last game but winless in their previous four before that. Um... Casey minus 135. San Jose 3 to 1. Draw plus 280. I'm going under 2.5 goals at plus 138. 9 o'clock, Dallas hosting Salt Lake. Um, Dallas winners two of their last three, and Salt Lake won in their last five. Um, Dallas minus 110. Salt Lake plus 260. Draw plus 250. I'm laying the minus 110 with Dallas. And 10 o'clock, Vancouver, Nashville. Um, Vancouver winners of two of their last five. Wrote Rotating uh, wins with uh, draws on the outside and a loss. So it's draw, win, loss, win, draw in their last five. And then Nashville won their last game, but winless in the previous four. Um, Vancouver plus 155, Nashville plus 150, draw plus 230. Uh, this is a hard one. But I'm going to go with the draw at plus 230. Sunday, 4 o'clock, you have Atlanta hosting D.C. United. D.C. United winless in their last five. Atlanta, one win in their last five games. Atlanta minus 220. D.C. plus 460. Draw plus 340. I'm going over three and a half goals plus 140. 730 Orlando hosting NYCFC. Orlando has won their last two. NYCFC won uh, their last game, but winless in the previous four before that. Um, Orlando plus 130. NYCFC plus 175. Draw plus 230. I'm going with Orlando at home plus 130. And 8 o'clock, New England and LA Galaxy. Um, both teams, uh, two wins in their last five. Um, New England, even money. LA Galaxy, plus 210. Um, draw, plus 260. This is a hard one, um, but I'm going to go with the draw at plus 260. College football is back, ladies and gentlemen. Week zero. I'm here to make the picks for the week zero slate. So, without further 
Adieu. Here we go. All games are going to be played on Saturday. Um, so 12 o'clock on CBS Sports Network, you have Austin P at Western Kentucky. Um, so my pick for this game, I am going to give out as my first pick. Of the season. Austin P getting the 26 and a half. Um, I have a three point differential. The line's 26 and a half. And my projected line is 23 and a half total. Um, the actual total is 66 and a half. And I project 65. And. Um, about a quarter. Um, I just want to make sure the line didn't move on us. It did not. So. Um, I'm going to take Austin P. Getting the points here. Um, next up, 12.30 on Fox, Nebraska, Northwestern from Dublin, Aviva Stadium. Um, so, um, Nebraska... Is favored by 11 and a half totals 50 and a half. I'm going to um, take Northwestern getting the 11 and a half. I think that is too high. Um, conference game. Um, why do I feel like this was 13 and a half a couple days ago? It must have went down. Northwestern must have gotten betting down. So, um, Anyway, um, I'm still going to take Northwestern. Um, so, I'm going to take Northwestern, get in 11.5. And, and by the way, my projections are 9 and 48.4, and it's 11.5 and 15.5. And um, 3.30, CBS Sports Network, you have Idaho State at Yonel V. Um, so, Yonel V favored by 21.5, total is... 52, um, I'm going to take UNLV minus the points because I project 23 and a half and 50 and about four fifths. So I'm going to lay the 21 and a half with UNLV against Idaho State. Um, four o'clock on Fox Sports 1, you have Utah State hosting UConn. Um, Utah State's favored by 26 and a half, totals 58 and a half. I'm going to take... UConn getting the 26 and a half. That is a big number. Utah State might be looking ahead to Alabama next week. So it's the perfect sandwich spot for Utah State. So give me the um, 26 and a half. I project 18 and 55 and 3 tenths. So give me UConn and the 26 and a half against Utah State. Big 10 hour Wyoming, Illinois. Um, Illinois favorite by 13 and a half. Total is 43 and a half. Um, Give me Wyoming getting the points. Um, I don't think Wyoming's going to be very good. But I can see like, Illinois peeking ahead past this game a little bit. Um, not calling for the outright upset. Um, I project 9 and 46 and 3 20th. So I'm going to take Wyoming getting the 13 and a half against Illinois. 5 o'clock on the ACC Network. You have Duquesne at Florida State. Um... The Canes favored, or whoops, Florida State's favored by 13 and a half. Totals 55 and a half. The Cane will never be favored in that game. So I'm going to take the Cane getting the big number. Sandwich spot for Florida State. I project 10 and a half and 54. So give me the Cane getting the big number. Um, 7 o'clock, CBS Sports Network, Charlotte FAU. Um, FAU was a 7 and a half point favorite. Total 16 and a half. Um, this is a tough one from, like, where am I going to go standpoint. But I'm going to take Charlotte getting the 7.5. My projection is 3 and 56 and 2 fifths. So I'm going to take Charlotte getting the 7.5 against FAU. 8.15, Florida and m at North Carolina on the ACC Network. Um, North Carolina is a 34.5 point favorite. Total is 55.5. Um... Give me Florida A&M 
getting all those points. Um, classic look ahead spot for Florida, or I'm sorry, for North Carolina. So same strategy as the Florida State game there. Sandwich game. 9 o'clock, you have North Texas at UTEP. My um, UTEP is a one half point underdog. Total is 54 and a half. Money lines are even minus 110 each way. Um, give me UTEP getting the one half and minus 110 straight up. Um, I project 15 uh, for UTEP in total 51 and 17 20th. So give me UTEP plus one half and minus 110 straight up. UTEP's about to be, become a favorite. Um, 10 o'clock on ESPN2, you have Nevada and New Mexico State. Um, I project um, Nevada as a six-point favorite, total 62 and 120th. Um, I'm going to... Uh, Take New Mexico State. They're getting eight and a half. Totals free. Actually, no, that's a lie. Um, I'm not taking New Mexico State. I'm actually taking the over 48 and a half. Um, my projection, like I said, is 62 and a 20th, and it's 48 and a half. So I love the over between Nevada and New Mexico State. I think that both teams are going to put up some points here. It's my first total of the podcast. And then, last but not least, 10.30 Eastern, CBS Sports are Vanderbilt, Hawaii. Um, Vanderbilt's a nine and a half point favorite. Total's 54 and a half. I'm going to take Hawaii, get in the nine and a half. I love Hawaii. I project them as actually a 12 point favorite. Total 56 and a 20th. So I absolutely love Hawaii getting all those points against Vandy. So there you have it. The first set of college football picks for the season. Now move on to golf. Um, we have... The PGA Tour Championship to talk about in terms of a leaderboard. And at the top right now, with a score of 15 under, Scotty Scheffler. He's running away with this thing. Second with 10 under, Xander Shoffley. Third with 9 under, Matt Fitzpatrick. Tied for fourth with 8 under, Joaquin Neiman and Patrick Cantlay. Tied for sixth with 7 under, Sanjay and Murray McElroy and Cam Smith. Tied for ninth with 6 under, Cam Young, Justin Thomas, John Rahm, Seb Straka, Sam Burns. Tied for 14th with 5 under Aaron Weiss, JT Potson, Taylor Hogue, and Colin Morikawa. 18th with 4 under Jordan Spieth. Tied for 19th with 3 under Brian Harmon, Brett Horschel, Scott Stallings. Tied for 22nd with 2 under Adam Scott, Kanguli, Vecchi Massimo, and Tony Finau, who is my pick. Tied for 26th with 1 under Max Holman, Victor Hovland. 28th with 1 over Saeed Thiglia. 29th with 3 over Corey Connors. All right, now I'll move on to NASCAR. Um... We have two races to discuss. Um, Xfinity tonight, 7.30 from Daytona International Speedway. Um, So, Daytona in late August is something you never see. Back in the day, it used to be the Daytona 500 to start the year, and then they used to race their 4th of July weekend. But times have changed in NASCAR for sure. Um, So it's interesting that Daytona is this late in the season. And by the way, we won't see the truck series for another two weeks. Um, So for here, I'm going to take to win the Wawa 250 from Daytona. I'm like uh, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. fourteen to one. I think he's due to come through here, so I'm going with Ricky Stenhouse Jr. fourteen to one to win the Wawa two fifty from Daytona and the Cup Series Saturday night under the lights, which is tomorrow seven o'clock on NBC from Daytona. Um, the Coke Zero Sugar four hundred should be a really really good race. Um, I'm gonna go. To win this race, somebody that's been red hot, he's 25 to 1, and his name is Kevin Harvick. He used to own this track back in the day. Great value on Kevin Harvick, 25 to 1, to win the Coke Zero Sugar 250. 
All right, now move on to my NFL defensive end rankings. Um, there's a weird number of defensive ends that made the cut because some teams um, refer to um, three, four, and four, three defenses to the point where they have really um, one defensive end and two linebackers. So um, the number of players that made this list, 53, because, like I said, some teams have one player listed as defensive end and, like, two, say, at outside linebacker. So without further ado, here we go. 53, Taquan Graham, Atlanta Falcons. 52, Morgan Fox, Los Angeles Chargers. 51, Larry Ogunjobi, Pittsburgh Steelers. 50, Roy Robertson, Harris, Jacksonville Jaguars. 49, Dorrance Armstrong, Dallas Cowboys. 48, Armin Watts, Minnesota Vikings. 47, Yator Grossmatos, Carolina Panthers. 46, Dietrich Weiss Jr., New England Patriots. 45, Emmanuel Ogba, Miami Dolphins. 44, Ogbania Arcoquanco, Orkinoko, Houston Texans. 43, Denico Autry, Tennessee Titans. 42, Travis Gibson, Chicago Bears. 41, William Golston, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. 40, Samson Abukam, San Francisco 49ers. 39, Jonathan Grenard, Houston Texans. 38, Charles Harris, Detroit Lions. 37, Jermaine Johnson, New York Jets. 36, Dean Lowry, Green Bay Packers. 35, Frank Clark, Kansas City Chiefs. 34, Adafe Owe, Baltimore Ravens. 33, Quiddy Pay, Indianapolis Colts. 32, Brian Burns, Carolina Panthers. 31, Kevon Thibodeau, New York Giants. 30, Aiden Hutchinson, Detroit Lions. 29, Robert Quinn, Chicago Bears. 28, Ashawn Robinson, Los Angeles Rams. 27, Josh Sweat, Philadelphia Eagles. 26, Dalvin Tomlinson, Minnesota Vikings. 25, Bradley Chubb, Denver Broncos. 24, Sam Hubbard, Cincinnati Bengals. 23, Trey Hendrickson, Cincinnati Bengals. 22, Leonard Williams, New York Giants. 21, Carl Austin, New York Jets. 20, Akeem Hicks, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. 19, Shelby Harris, Seattle Seahawks. 18, Gregory Russo, Buffalo Bills. 17, Marcus Davenport, New Orleans Saints. 16, Montez Sweat, Washington Commanders. 15, Randy Gregory, Denver Broncos. 14, Carlos Dunlap, Kansas City Chiefs. 13, Yannick Ngakwe, Indianapolis Colts. 12, Jade Davion, Clowney, Cleveland Browns. 11, Calais Campbell, Baltimore Ravens. 10, Brandon Graham, Philadelphia Eagles. 9, J.J. Watt, Arizona Cardinals. 8, Max Crosby, Las Vegas Raiders. 7, Chase Young, Washington Commanders. 6, Chandler Jones, Las Vegas Raiders. 5, Cam Jordan, New Orleans Saints. 4, Demarcus Lawrence, Dallas Cowboys. 3, Vaughn Miller, Buffalo Bills. That was weird to say. 2, Nick Bosa, San Francisco 49ers. And number 1, defensive end coming into the season, Miles Garrett, Cleveland Browns. Um, so, Miles Garrett, to me, runs away with this. He's been the best DN in the league for several years now. Nick Bosa's really good. Von Miller's still up there. He's getting up there in age. Same for DeMarcus Lawrence. Cam Jordan in that same boat. Chandler Jones is underrated. Chase Young, in theory, should be higher, but really hasn't reached that potential yet, whether it's injury or whatever. Max Crosby, super underrated. J.J. Watt's a player in decline for me, but um, he's still J.J. Watt. And Brandon Graham is really, really good. So that is a really fun top 10, and there you have it for the defensive end rankings. Now I'm going to move on to the news and notes for today. Um, there's stuff that I have to um, get into. We'll start with baseball. Um, Major League Baseball will have a South Korea tour as the league will send players for a November interleague series in first trip to the country since 1922. That is pretty interesting that the league is going to do that. Um, I wonder like who they're going to pick. Um, I wonder if this is prep for the, uh, the WBC. Um, I think that some players will be willing to do it and others will not. And considering like injury risks and whatnot, because I remember, um, gosh, this must've been 10 years ago at this point, Mark Teixeira played in the WBC and he literally, uh, I think he broke his wrist or something, something weird happened. Uh, he had some type of injury and then you saw it with Chad Holmgren because most of the NBA players are playing in Pro AM. But, yeah, it's risky, but at the same time, it could be worth it for some guys to improve their game and 
try to convince their teams that they belong and whatnot. Yankees prospect Matt Sauer records the most strikeouts for a major or minor league player in a game this season at 17. So that is pretty neat. Nestor Cortez to the injured list with a groin strain. That is a brutal loss for the Yankees. He's been their best starting pitcher this year. Um, and the question is, does Clark Schmidt go into the rotation? That's what they should do. I think that he'll do an admirable job filling in. And then um, you put the AAA guy that you called up in the uh, in the bullpen. In that Michael King role, if uh, um, last night um, was an aberration. Because last night he literally uh, hit three batters and um, literally loaded the bases in a game that they're blowing out Oakland. But if he's not that pitcher and he's the pitcher he showed in AAA, then you put him in the Michael King role. And you put Schmidt in the Cortez spot in the rotation. So, um, something to, uh, monitor. Um, Zach Willard to the injured list with right forearm tendonitis. Brutal loss for the Phillies who are trying to get one of the final playoff spots in the National League. But good news for the Phillies is that Bryce Harper, um, could be back after missing two months of action. So, I'd like, looks like he's going to be back tonight. So, that's really good news for them. Braves rookie Vaughn Grisham said it would have been terrible if the Mets drafted him in 2019. Yikes. Um, Novak Djokovic to miss the U.S. Open due to a ban on unvaccinated foreign national traveling to U.S. That is just absolutely brutal in terms of the sport and not getting one of your better... Players to play, and I think Iga Swiatek's out of this tournament as well. So that is brutal news for tennis. Um, move on to football now. Um, Tyron Smith out at least three to four months after having surgery on Friday. That's just brutal for the Cowboys. We talked about his injury on the show yesterday, and now the question is uh, who fills in for Smith, and uh, when will Smith be back? So the case for them weathering the storm is that they're 500 in the NFC East. The Eagles are right there as well. And um, they need the Eagles to underachieve and they need um, to win games that they're supposed to against inferior competition. Denzel Mims requests a trade as um, his agent released a statement after the team refused to cut him. Interesting. Um, Giants pass rusher, um, Ojulari underwent MRI after leaving practice with a lower body injury, but is expected to be okay. So that is good news. Um, Tom Brady, the start against the Colts. We talked about that while going through the game. And there was a fight in the Bengals Rams joint practice involving Aaron Donald. So that's not cool. I feel like we see those types of fights every year in the preseason. Basketball. Reed Howard wins the WNBA Rookie of the Year after averaging 16.2 points per game, 4.5 rebounds, and 2.8 assists for the Atlanta Dreams. That is really well-deserved for her. Um, The Knicks are keeping draft picks as they are not willing to attach first rounders to a potential Julius Randle trade. That's according to uh, Shams from The Athletic. And Russell Westbrook could be done with the Lakers as the uh, Pat Beverly trade um, makes it more likely Westbrook won't be on the Lakers roster by the start of training camp. So the question is, where does he go? Like, does he go to the Knicks for Julius Randle, Derrick Rose, and Evan Fournier? And draft picks going to New York? Actually, they they should even do a pick swap, but... I think the Lakers would be a win for the Lakers if they did a pick swap, but that's the one everybody's bringing up. But if I'm New York, you only do that trade if the Lakers throw in multiple first-round picks to, to, to go with Westbrook. So um, I don't know if I'd like Westbrook on the Knicks, but um, I would do it if 
the Lakers offer multiple first-round picks. Phil Kessel chose the Coyotes as he didn't hold back when asked about his move from Arizona to Vegas. So that's not surprising to me, at least. All right, last but not least, um, best bet in Fat Five time. We'll start with best bet. Uh, brought to you by DraftKings. Or I'm sorry, FanDuel. Um, I'm going to lay a quarter unit on the Astros' run line. Minus one half at plus 102 against the White Sox. Um, I just think that they're going to... Uh, I'm sorry, not the White Sox, the Orioles. It's even money now. So I'm going to lay the uh, quarter unit on Astros minus one half against the Orioles. I had White Sox in my head because that's who Baltimore had just played. I just think that the Astros are rocking and rolling, defeating inferior opponents left and right. All right, college football time. Um, Fab Five, the first Fab Five of the year. So, to kick things off for this, I'm going to take the 11 half with Northwestern against Nebraska. Um, it was 13 half and went down to 11 and a half. So, for best or for Fab Five, I lay one unit on every pick. So, first pick, Northwestern plus one half against Nebraska. Um, I think Nebraska is a team that's a little overhyped, and Northwestern's a team that I think is certainly going to be better than a year ago. I think this is a single digit game. So, give me um, Northwestern getting the 11.5 against Nebraska. Next up. I'm going to take Charlotte getting the 7.5 against FAU. Conference rival game. Um, I think that FAU is going to take a step back. I don't think Charlotte's very good either. I think these two teams are even, and I don't think FAU should be giving over a touchdown against Charlotte. So give me Charlotte getting the 7.5 against FAU. Next, I'm going to take Wyoming getting the 13.5 against Illinois. I think Illinois could be... Looking ahead a little bit here. So give me Wyoming getting the 13 and a half against Illinois in what could be like a classic sandwich spot. Next up, give me Hawaii getting the nine and a half at home against Vandy. It's my favorite pick on the board in terms of an underdog. So give me Hawaii getting the nine and a half against Vandy. I just think Vandy's terrible. And Hawaii at home is usually a really feisty and good underdog. And last but not least, over 48 and a half. Between the Nevada Wolfpack and the New Mexico State Aggies. So, um, give me the, um, uh, over 48 and a half between Nevada and New Mexico State, what I think is going to be a uh, more of a high scoring game than people expect. And the money line pick of the week, I'm going all in on this underdog in particular to win outright. And my rule for money line pick of the week, it has to be higher than a field goal. I'm taking Hawaii against Vanderbilt to win it straight up. So give me Hawaii plus 290 at home against Vandy to win their game outright at home against Vandy. That crowd's going to be ruckus. I don't think Vandy is very good. I think they're the worst team in the Power 5 by a mile. And Hawaii, I think, is going to be fired up for this game. So there you have it for the show. It was a big show, a fun show. I'll be back on Monday recapping everything from the weekend and look ahead to everything going on on Monday. We have the U.S. Open starting Monday, so we'll get into that. And it should be a really fun week ahead as well. Hope you guys have a great weekend, everyone.